Hey, do you want to be able to split your MIDI drums into different channels in Ableton Live so you can mix them the way you want it? Well, you naughty, naughty person. I got you. Okay, so one of the number one questions you guys give me in the comments is how to split the drums that you get out of a plugin, like Steven Slate drums, for example, into different channels in Ableton Live so you don't need the plugin anymore and you can also mix each separate piece of your kit the way you want it. Well, lucky for you, I'm gonna show you how to do that today, but please, please don't forget to like this video so it spreads around the world and we can start spreading punk rock and rock made by someone that's not Travis Barker and his kids, you know? So please like my video so we can start a proper revival of rock music in this world using Ableton and modern programs and DAWs to make this kind of music better and better and not just stale and stale forever. I digress, MIDI drums, let's do this. First. Let's go into the computer, right? Ah, f God damn it, there we go again with the K-pop, isn't it, Julian? You might be addicted to K-pop, Julian. You don't want your followers to know this, Julian. You're meant to be a rock guy, come on. What you're doing to your channel, to your brand? It's gotta stop. <laughs> oh, sorry guys, I let's just go into Ableton, sorry about that. Okay, so I have this MIDI drum part written in Ableton Live here, right? And it's all good, I like it how it is, and I'm ready to use it in my song, I'm not gonna edit the MIDI anymore. So just imagine this is a full song of MIDI drums programmed to perfection, and you're satisfied with them, and you're ready to mix these drums, and you want to split them, and make the kick go to one channel, the snare go to another channel, the toms go to other channels, so you can properly feel like you had a real drummer, right? And you can mix your drums and make them sound a little bit less like the Steven Slate original drums, and more like your drums. So let's just listen to this little section here so you guys have an idea of what's going on. Okay, so I wanna split that into different tracks, right? So I can mix it. First step, organization, right? Let's rename this track to drummer. That way we know this is not our drum track, this is our drummer, our virtual drummer that lives inside Steven Slate drums. He's playing for us. He's not actually our drum recording, okay? So next step, open Steven Slate drums right here. And you know this, right? We have all these tabs, the create tab where you can choose your drum kit, the edit tab where you can kind of edit your kit a little bit, the mix tab where you have the mix of your drums, the map so you can map your MIDI the way you want it, the grooves where you can just choose pre-made grooves to use in your songs, and the settings where it just is the settings, right? Nothing too interesting about that. But today I already chose my drum kit. I already have my drum pattern. So we're gonna focus on the mix tab right here. In the mix tab, it's just a mixing console, basically. You see, this looks exactly like a mixing console. You have solo, mute, the faders, the pen, and a phase reverse. That's it, it's just a mixing console, right? So what do we need to do in order not to have to mix inside the plugin and be able to mix outside, in Ableton, where we want to mix, where we know how to mix, right? So. It's very easy. As you can see, as in every console, there's an output section down here. So if you click it, you have multiple outputs that you can choose to send your individual channels out of. You have all these channels. The mono channels in Ableton don't really work. I don't know why. I don't know if it's an Ableton thing or is a Steven Slate thing, but we can just focus on the first 16 stereo outputs. It's enough for us. It's more than enough. So at this point, you have to route your individual tracks into individual outputs, right? And you have two options here. You can either choose to use a little bit of the mix inside Steven's Lay Drums to route things together. So for example, instead of routing kick direct and kick direct two into different outputs, you could just bundle them into one output and just use the mix that you have there in Steven's Lay Drums as your kick mix. And that way you're gonna need less tracks later in Ableton. And I kind of recommend that because the mix that comes as default in Steven's Lay Drums is quite good. So you don't really have to go deep into dividing your snare into snare top, snare bottom, snare ring. You can just bundle all of the snare into one output and just have them in one track in Ableton and not have to worry about mixing them all later in Ableton. But if you want to do that, I would recommend you just double clicking all of the faders here like this. So everything is at zero. And before you send everything out, everything is going to be just at a standard volume and you're going to have the ideal volume for every track. But you know me, guys, I like to cut some corners. We're going to use the Stevens Lay drums mix. So let me just load my drum kit again. So that's gonna bring back the mix that we had here before. We're gonna bundle all of the kick tracks into one track and all of the snare tracks into one track. Now I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. So let's finally start doing this, Julian. Come on, how do I split my f 
in channels out of Steven's Slade drums. Easy. Okay, so you have kick here, right? And let's not use one because one is just the main output from Steven's Slade drums. So let's just kind of to keep our heads organized. Let's start from two. Okay, so all the kicks are going to go to output two like this. Snare now, right? All the snares are going to go to output three. So this is going to go to output three. This is going to go to output three. All of the snares. Don't worry if the volume of the fader is up or down, all of the snares going to three. Now toms, you wanna have each tom into different outputs, but as you can see here, Steven Slade kits sometimes have a lot of toms and many of the times you're not using all of these toms. So it's a good idea to check in your song which toms are actually being used. So you only have to route the toms that are being used. And the easiest way to do that is to play your song and see which meters here go up and light up, right? Okay, so I'm only using Tom 12 and 16, obviously, from what I saw here. So let's route the first one to four and the other one to five. Because you want to leave Tom separated because they're not the same piece. They're different Toms, you know, so every piece in a different output. That's a good idea, you know, a good way to go about it. Next one hi-hat. You see, now in the real world when I'm micing drums, I usually don't mic separate cymbals like the hi-hat, sometimes the hi-hat, but it usually stays really low in the mix because most of my hi-hat sound comes from the overhead already. But in this pattern here that I've done, the hi-hat's not even being played. So I don't even have to route the hi-hat. I'll route the ride as an example. By the way, do you say route or root? I don't know. I'm not from... No, this is the... F third language I speak already so bear with me right not my first language just so you know anyways I'm gonna put the ride into a separate output here let's do this so I use the last one that I used was five so this is gonna be six and then of course we're not using any claps we're not using any cowbell we're not using any tambourine but I think we're using all of these here the overheads in the two rooms so let's just check yeah we're using all of that so let's just route the overheads to seven and then room to eight and room B to nine. And that should be it if I didn't completely f up in the middle and put the wrong number somewhere, I should be all good. But we'll go and make new tracks in Ableton and check if everything is all right. So next step, right? Create the tracks in Ableton. So create a new audio track, not a MIDI track, create a new audio track, insert audio track, right? And let's call it kick. You see here, usually you choose your input from your interface, so it's an external in. But you don't want an external in in this case, you want an internal in. And that internal in is your drummer track. Remember that we renamed our MIDI drums track to drummer? So it's right here, drummer. And then if you go to the next little menu here, you have all the outputs we were using in Steven Slate drums. Look at that, all of them right there. So remember, kick was two. We can check it right there, kick was two, kick was two. So we choose two right here. And now if if we change this to input here and solo it so we can listen to what's coming into that channel. It's magic, but we have just the kick. The kick is separated. God damn it, guys, we did it. We did it. We have just kick in one track. Now, all we gotta do is repeat the process for every little piece we're using inside Steven Slate drums. So next one was snare. I recommend you just duplicate this track, this kick track we just made, and we just change the name and the output from each track. It's a little bit easier. So let's do this. I'll show you how. Let's first go back into auto here and get out a solo. So let's just duplicate this track right here, right? Rename it snare and choose output tree because that was the snare output, right? So, okay. Snare, output tree, snare, output tree. Okay, let's duplicate it one more time. Next one was Tom 1, let's say. So Tom 1, let's just make sure it's output 4. There we go, output 4. Next one, it is the other Tom. So we can call it Tom 2. And let's just check, and it's output 5. So we put output 5 right here. Next one is... Ride. There we go. Ride. Duplicate this one, name it Ride, and change it to output six. Right there. There we go. Duplicate it again. Next one was overheads. Very important. Overheads. The most important mics in your drum set. Overheads. Output seven. One more time. Room. 
Output eight. And then room B. Remember, I'm just duplicating the tracks. I'm not making new tracks. It's a little bit easier to duplicate and rename and change the output, right? So room B, output nine. I feel like I'm talking like a samba judge here. You know, a uh, samba school judge in Brazil. If you're Brazilian, you know what I'm saying. You know, like nota, days, output nine. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Anyways, that's a little special token for my Brazilian subscribers right there. Okay, cool. So I think we got all of them going to the right place. So the next step for me, at least, would be choose all of these tracks right here, right click them and link these tracks. It's gonna make your job a little bit easier. If you're enabled on Live 11, it is a really cool thing for drums in general to link your tracks. But anyways, let's mute the original drummer track. Let's change all our drum tracks into in right here, right? All of them into in. And let's hear if it works. As you can see, all of my little meters here on the right are lining up. Everything is going to the right place. You could stop there. You could leave these channels on inputs and just use them to mix your drums and still have the drummer track playing the whole time. But if you want to be old school and if you want to have the actual audio of your drums so you can look at it in your program and feel like you're a proper mixing engineer, you know, watching your drums go and mixing and chopping and doing things, you're going to want to record that sound. And it's really easy. All you have to do is let Let's go out of in on all those channels back into auto right let's record enable all of them it's super simple all you have to do now is press record there you go and as you can see although the mix of the Steven Slade drums was pretty good for the sound together in general, you can see that the overheads are a little bit quiet and the rooms are a little bit quiet and the ride is a little bit quiet. So what can you do about that if you want to get a bit more volume out of these channels that are a bit too quiet? Well, let's go back into the Steven Slade drums and all the channels that were a bit too quiet, we can just double click the fader like this and make them go up in the mix and then just record it again. It's easy. It's a process of trial and error, really. If you feel one of your channels is too quiet, just go back into Steven Slade drums, raise the volume there, and record again. And there we go. Now we have a proper drum recording into different tracks and you can just delete the drummer track here. You don't need it anymore. And you can mix the individual pieces of your drums the way you want it in Ableton using your Ableton plugins or your third party plugins and have a lot of fun. Now you're probably asking, man, you recorded the ride and it, there's not even ride in there. Well, there is. Uh, I'm gonna solo for you guys. It's just really quiet. I could make this louder again in Steven Slate drums, but this is just an example video. So there's no point, but listen to it. There's ride in there. See the little, the little meter there? It's there, it's there. <laughs> if I unlink this one, I choose just this one and I just put it up like this. Oh, there it is, there's my ride. There it is, oh boy. But I don't even use ride mics to be honest. So it's not really a bother for me. But you see, you have your kick here in a separate track, your snare here in a separate track, your toms in separate tracks, your overhead in a separate track, room separate track, room B in a separate track, ready to mix. Of course, you can go the super hard way, as I told you before, and just send kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, snare ring, all into different tracks. And that's gonna leave you with a bunch of other tracks to mix. And it might be what you want. You might want to have a super complex drum mix and just have fun mixing your drums. But when you're trying to just get music out there quick, and all that stuff. You can skip some corners, right? And Steven Slate Drums is very well mixed and you can use a little bit of their mixing, mix it with your mixing and make something beautiful. I hope you guys like this video. <laughs> if you have any more questions about this, don't forget you can visit my website and book a private Zoom consultation with me and you can ask me anything you want, anything you want. I'll answer to you all your questions about Ableton, music production, punk rock or gear, whatever you want. So visit my website, there's a link there to have a Zoom consultation with me. And if you like what I do, please subscribe to this channel man. I'm trying to make this channel grow as much as I can. I'm just one guy here, one man operation doing everything by myself. So I really appreciate all the help from every single one of you. I answer all the comments, at least I try to. So please subscribe and please press all the buttons that help me out there in this world. And I see you guys next time. Bye.